Hi, and welcome back to the workbench. Today I'm taking apart an Ildinio power strip. It's a little bit of a weird unit, and it was from Amazon, and I don't think it's actually meant for or rated for otherwise really good idea to use it in the US market. So we'll take it apart and see why that's the case and see how it's held up in general after about 12 months of use on our workbench. If you enjoy these videos, please subscribe down below and give us a thumbs up. On with the show. Got this a while back. What it is is a multi-prong power outlet made for use with a various plugs. It's kind of a cross unit that does uh, European, British, and US power with a USB adapter built in. But it's kind of been a horrible mess. What I got it for is because it's got protected plugs. I, I wanted something that had plugs that would just seal up, you know, like the uh, current outlets here in the U.S. do, where it's just got a protective plate that uh, slides into place. You don't have something plugged in on them. I, I kind of like that. It seemed nice, and I uh, thought it would be useful for the workbench, because then they wouldn't just immediately let uh, cruft fall into them, and you could knock them out before you plug something in, and then you wouldn't get stuff in your outlets. But um, unfortunately, this is what they shipped me. Not only is it not, uh, well, not really dedicated for a U.S. power supply, it's also, uh, well, not very good. Frankly, the plates that, even the plates that cover these up aren't so hot. Uh, they do let crap fall in there. Actually, if anything, the fact that they're a slanted opening like that Although they do look like they seal up in the back, but the uh, ground openings are massive, wide open, so that was that was kind of a wash. And it ended up, it didn't really work out all that well. The, um, the actual outlets themselves are, are wonky. Insert something into them, and then if you pull on the cable a little bit, like uh, this, say, you pop it in there, you pull on the cable a little bit while you're working with it, jostles around. I mean, it falls out, first of all, and... Second, it doesn't make very good contact. The, the device will just power up and down and whatnot. So not that great. What I wanted to do is take a look inside and see what it is. I was gonna check to see if the USB is isolated in any way from this or if your USB devices are likely to go live and kill you at any moment. And also see if, well, just how exactly this is designed because it, it didn't really work that well. So let's take a look. One of the weirder things in this design is the openings. The screws for holding it together are actually covered with plugs. They're not sealed plugs, so they don't actually seal out any kind of moisture, but they aren't removable either, which is a little strange and kind of useless in my opinion. So rather than mess around and try to remove them some other way, I'm just gonna drill them straight out. There we have it, it's open. And uh, before we take a look inside, I, I can't even actually pronounce this, it's Eldino. Eldinio, Eld, Eld, Eldinio, uh, new powerful charging series. I'm not even sure how to say that, so that's never a good sign, I don't think. The plugs are all out, I just, well, as you saw, I drilled them out and got the screws out of there just fine. One of the other weird things on this, there's no, uh, no approval at all. This is just uh, Chinese export approved, so they, they can export it out of the country, I assume. And uh, it's 10 amp. 250 volt, which is a weird rating for anything that's even nominally being sold in the U.S. for power strip, because almost all the circuits here are 15 amp, and I assume even over in, uh, you know, Britain or Europe, although I say even over because I've never actually traveled over that way, I'm assuming they also have, you know, 15 amp-ish circuits with 250, although maybe they're lower, maybe they fuse them at 10, 10 amps, so in that case, this would be for one of the European markets, I would assume. There's immediately some problems in here. So, this cable right here, when I had popped the top off, the switches were, switch was actually hitting the cables there, and that's why you can see on here, possibly, a little bit of discoloration on the blue. So that should be staked down on here, possibly use an automotive coupler screwed down under here with a loop coming out and have that hold it down so it doesn't hit. Uh, also, the ground has failed over here, so that's uh, definitely a downside if I put it that way. You can see this one's much farther in than the other ones. So that, from relatively little use, I'd say I don't, haven't, rather, used it that much on my workbench. 
so far. I only pulled it off the shelf, I think, uh, probably about 12 months ago and started using it because I needed the USB adapters for something I was doing. Didn't actually get much use out of these at all. The spring action isn't half bad on these. That's actually one of the things that I was complaining about, but that, for all I know, this is, you know, relatively normal for that type of plug. I don't really have much of a comparison for it since I don't have any plugs like this here in the U.S., so who knows? I, I'm assuming this is cheap and awkward, given the rest of the build quality here, but it seems to be kind of a mishmash because the cable, the cable's approved by the... Uh, Canadian Standards Association, or CSA, what used to be the Canadian Standards Association for the plug. Uh, so uh, good enough for Canada or Skookum or whatever they say up north. And then the cable is UL listed, and it looks like it's rated for uh, 10 amps. UL SVT VW1. 105 Celsius and 300 volt. And then later it says uh, 200 volt. So I'm not sure what that is. Maybe the SVT rating is 200 volt and the SVT1 rating is 300 volt, but that doesn't matter too much because it's an 18 gauge cable. And I believe they continued the 18 gauge for all the wiring, which is fine for this USB adapter, but for this that's a bit weak sauce for US outlets because we use 15 amp here. So uh, you won't have any kind of fusing on here, which would make that okay if this was fused properly for the cable and fused for 10 amp or whatever that would probably be fine if there's even just a fuse or a fuse and some surge suppression or whatever so that's I, I don't know without a fuse in here I'm not really comfortable using the outlets on this just because you could overdraw them not easily but you could overdraw them and there wouldn't be any repercussions right until uh I don't know, something on here just started melting, basically. So that's not really good. Eh, I'm always a little uneasy about Amazon selling stuff like this on their platform, frankly. Because nobody else would, you know, well, you know, maybe some of you watching this would understand, but not uh, anybody who owns a house if they just bought this in thinking, oh, well, it's uh, for U.S., a plug kind of fits in there, good enough. Uh, that would be not, not great when it caught on fire. And the USB adapter actually looks okay. I'd have to rip into it and figure out what some of those chips are. The soldering job's a bit uh, crusty, but that's not unusual for a, a power strip. I, usually they're fairly, for, for comparison's sake, here's a standard UL listed US outlet, and that's uh, also crusty as all get out with, you know, extra copper staked on there and solder uh, splattered all over it to add some extra opacity to the lines and what have you. So not that unusual. And this, this module actually looks okay. I don't see anything too egregious at a glance on there. I mean, some of the parts are kind of hodgepodged in, but it looks like they were intentionally put there at least. It wasn't like an afterthought where they screwed something up and decided that to catch uh, I don't know, keep voltage from traveling the wrong direction. They'd, they'd add an extra diode in somewhere or whatever. That actually looks all right. Plus, i not sure. The cutout here, I'm not sure if that's just for uh, adding in the uh, slotting so it'll sit in there and won't move around, which is also a decent touch. Or if that also adds a bit of uh, separation from the transformer or... It looks like it's four pin. I'm going to go with transformer over here to the sockets so that you won't you won't have some potential problem with that um, high voltage lines being next to the circuitry and the low voltage lines. It looks like it looks like there's at least a attempt at some separation there at a glance. So that's that's always a that's always a bonus. But uh, I don't know. This unit looks kind of suspect. The wiring isn't appropriate for North America. The, 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 the actual rails for the power look okay. I didn't measure them, so I couldn't attest to them being good for 150, or 15 amps or 10 amps or whatever. But they, they look similar to what I see in 
most of the other power strips. So these are probably just standard parts that are good for a bit more amperage than the cabling, which probably shouldn't be used in the States. So on that alone, I'm going to say probably not good to use this. You'd have to add in some protection for overdraw on the on the power and that makes it not really worth it you just go buy something that's uh, properly rated for it i'm going to keep it just because it's got the weird outlets so if i have a uh, euro plugs that i need to plug into something it'd be nice for that but uh, for actually using i'll put a a uh, fuse on there so it'll blow a fuse if it goes over amperage on here I probably have enough space to squeeze one in over on this side, or eh, possibly over here, although I don't... Uh, anything over here that would bridge that would be kind of questionable. Probably where I'll put a fuse in is right here. It would actually add a little bit of length to this. I can get it out of the way a little more fully of the power switch, although that might have just been a manufacturing flaw where they, they left it sitting under the power switch and it's supposed to be firmly pressed down there because that seems to stay although there's nothing to bind it which also doesn't make me real uh, happy with the build quality on this and that's it the inside of a rather suspect power strip with no ratings at all on the device itself it's an anti-static power socket i i don't know what that means maybe this is static ablative material that looks like standard ABS or one of the polymers to me. Maybe, yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not going to assume that the anti-static on there really means anything. Oh, there's a little bit of solder down in there too. Excellent. Just what I want in my power supply, or power strip rather. Solder floating around on the inside. Anyway, that's the inside of a cheap imported power strip imported not by me, but by somebody else in this case, with uh, really, really sketchy ratings for a U.S. strip. I Perhaps somebody else knows if it's good for Europe. You can comment down below and uh, let us know if a 10-amp, should it actually be rated at 10-amp, although it doesn't look like there's any authorities on here stating that they've looked it over and made sure that it uh, actually handles 10-amp okay. Well, thanks for watching, and getting a look inside this rather funky device, and uh, we'll see you next time.